Hey guys, Ron Bond, Bondo Build Construction here. Today we're pouring a big apron on the front of this house, this garage. Um, their, their old apron was all messed up. It was uh, flowing the wrong way. Kind of had a lot of clay underneath it. So we came in here and dug it all out. Put like a foot of uh, good material in there. Tamped it all. Took out all that clay. Took out the old apron. Basically extended the apron so that it's uh, going to pitch down. Because they actually kind of humped up from the clay and made the water run back towards the house in the garage and that obviously it heaved over the winter and everything so that's what we're doing today guys stay with us this is what we got guys basically there was an old step in here it was all messed up we took that out and it was like in this corner they had whoever did it before had stuck a bunch of rebars in there those holes and that didn't work because it still failed there wasn't any rebars over here so this piece actually settled and a bunch of water got in there then there was a funky apron on the front that didn't work so we extended it out like 13 feet and it's got a nice pitch to it now he's gonna redo his driveway so we cut the driveway we're all set, waiting for concrete. We're getting concrete from Rural Hill today. We gotta put some concrete around here to the door. And then we gotta put some concrete around back. We got a couple of steps out here we're doing. One little step here he wanted us to do, because the old one was all messed up. Now he's getting a new air conditioning unit, so we're gonna pour some concrete here for his air conditioning that's what we're doing today guys stay with us hey guys Bondo here just gonna walk you through what's going on today with the pour so uh, we had a rear loader truck here that we got from a company called Rural Hill it's up in Watertown New York um, we we pour concrete with Vitaly Robinson a lot but um, there's sometimes that they're not available so um, this Rural Hill is a small company out of, like I said, like up in Watertown, New York. We live in upstate New York, by the way. Um, so this company, they're small, but they're, they have nice concrete. I've used them a few times um, recently, just a couple times we've, we've poured with them. and they, they got nice concrete, and I like the drivers. They're, uh, they know what they're doing. They do only have rear loader trucks, which is a little different. We're used to front load trucks from Vitaly Robinson and mostly front load trucks but I mean I used to use rear loader trucks all the time so um, doesn't really bother me at all as long as it's an area you can drive up to like this apron we could drive right in here so they carry plenty of chutes so we're just dumping this concrete in here um, I got I got one guy that's that's a mason that works with me quite a bit and then I got a three new guys one of them's my son Jason and then the other two guys they're they're college kids I'm just trying to teach them teach them the trade so you know we had enough we had enough help here but when you see all these people you think we got too many but those three guys like I said they're fairly new so I use the power screed to knock this down it just works for me it works real good knocks the stones down I like using it um, we do pull some stuff off by hand, but this one here I like, you know, just having having the new kids, it's just easier to use the, the power screed sometimes. The day we poured this, it, it kept looking like it was going to rain, so I was a little nervous. And there's gutters on this house, so it did sprinkle a little bit in the morning, and I think the gutters might have held a little bit of water. So we kept getting a couple of drips coming out of the gutters. And uh, I've had that happen to me before, and it's a real pain in the butt. So uh, what I suggest, you know, that what we did and what I suggest to you is just throw a piece of cardboard or something in there if that ever happens to you. Just set that cardboard in between, trawling it. You just got to move the cardboard out of the way. We had to set it there and then broom it and set it back in there. But we were pouring along here, and... At some point, I got I got just about three quarters of the way done, 
we started looking at it and it looked like it could probably use a little more concrete up in the corner so we actually went back up in there and uh, filled that in and gave it a little more pitch it was kind of marginal it looked like it was almost level when we set the we set the height I think we messed up a little bit so we uh, here's where I floated it all off if you pay attention here and then the driver this driver's name's Mike he's he's a real good driver and he's also a, he's a concrete guy himself so he started looking at it and noticed that it looked a little low up way up in the corner there which you definitely wouldn't want that to be low so we just went in there and put a little more material in it and uh, sloped it away a little harder and then we just kept moving on so it wasn't a big deal it was an easy fix because we got at we got right in there and changed it so don't be afraid if something isn't right just to jump right back in there and, and make a make a fix on it it's pretty easy especially when the concrete's wet and it's not real hot it wasn't hot this day it was pretty overcast it was about the perfect day to pour concrete really in my opinion besides the little sprinkles that we had so when I'm power screening here guys if you pay attention sometimes I'll I'll go ahead and hit the edges you know we mag our edges off before but I'll take the power screen and just hit the edges before I turn and walk down through with it that just ensures that your edges are nice and flat and if you see here the driver he jumped right down and he grabbed a mag and started helping us that's that's the kind of guy he is I've worked with him a couple times real nice guy and he kind of held down on my power screen on the right so that it didn't float high and you know right there he's pushing down on it which which works good sometimes that it'll try to ride high on you then we just jumped off of it and finished it right up here without the power screen I just in a minute I just grabbed a little uh, eight foot stick and pulled it off after we shot this concrete in there then my son used the track buggy and I think he they got one track buggy or two full of concrete to do the back probably could have used a wheelbarrow but well, I got that track buggy so we used that filled it up and poured those two back pieces worked out pretty good here we are with the little eight footer If you guys like this video, do me a favor and go down and hit the like button. Now smash that like button. It'll help me out a lot. Um, I've been doing YouTube about a year, so I'm new to it. But I'm trying to build up my channel so that I can help people out. Because I've been doing concrete for 30 years. And i got a lot of tips and tricks that I can share with you. So, And if you haven't already, why don't you think about subscribing if you like this kind of stuff. If you like concrete work and you like home renovation stuff we do a lot of that in the winter time I buy houses and fix them up and rent them so I do a lot of stuff like that but generally we do mostly concrete work we do tons of it in the summer we build uh, basements out of Nadura blocks the insulated concrete forms we use them um, do a lot of stuff like that we do a lot of stamp crete um, sidewalks aprons like this pool decks all kinds of stuff like that so and I do a lot of excavation work too I got a mini excavator I got that track buggy I just bought a track skid steer that you can walk behind it's a Bobcat MT50 it's got a Harley rake on it and stuff so we got some small um, equipment for doing excavation and we do a fair amount of our own excavation like we excavated this um, piece here I had a buddy of mine come in and uh, he did it for me while I was doing another job. He came in and dug it all out and we put a bunch of uh, gravel in there and stuff. He came over and looked at it with me and he, him and my son did it. They did a nice job. They formed it up. So here we are. We just went through and magged everything. We're uh, magging the edges and stuff. I ended up kneeboarding this whole pad too. Ended up jumping on some foam kneeboards and just magging the whole surface just to take out the um, bow float lines and stuff and I, I also fresnoed it I took a, a steel fresno and hit
hit the hit the float marks out of it, the bow float lines. <laughs> Sorry. Someone had to call you out. Good, there's record of it if you're recording that. Evan, Evan's been mean. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional trauma. Emotional trauma works today. It's alright, you don't have to cry, Chris. I'm here for you. Is this part of the CCC harassment clause? Yeah, you mandatory? Yeah. <laughs> Masons have feelings too. Yeah, exactly. Mason might just matter. Add it, add it, add it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one will be in there. Can't pull that stuff with it. Really work this. Nice, Jay. Oh, it's a little bit. Being yeah. politically four, correct five. is wrong. <laughs> if you think about it, because being politically correct, you're still affecting somebody, aren't you? Oh, oh. Somebody should be brooming that back pad. The little broom. Remember, I just took the handle off because I thought we were going to need it. Come up here again. Yep. And I just watered it. We're just trying to get rid of those snaps. So the snaps don't come off all the mess. Your phone's already at 1 again. 50 cent again? Yeah. Good. It was at 15. So this was quite a long ways to broom guys so what I do when, when you got to go that far is I'll push the broom all the way down and then I'll drag it back because we got like five handles on this bow float I forget it was like maybe 20 some feet long so just push it down you want to wet the broom first and then just push it down and drag it back and try to keep the broom as straight as you can if you start wiggling it around the lines won't look right so you know it's hard when you come off the pad here we should just drag it straight off like that chris is kind of helping me because of the angle there well that's how you do it here we end up wetting the broom again here in a second and yeah, we're wetting it right here if you don't wet the broom like that you'll get these little little uh concrete boogers i call them believe it or not kind of funny but that's what I call them. Little, little balls of concrete will show up. A lot of times they'll wear off, but they just don't look that good. When you get a brand new job and you're done, they don't look good. So if you wet the broom, I don't know, it slides better or something. And you don't get those little balls of concrete on the surface. So that's what we do. Works pretty good. We just drag it. Like I said, try to keep the broom straight. Push it down. Pull it right back. 
And right there, Chris is helping me just pull it off. There's a slow, slow mo. Just finishing things up. Hit the wall here and just try to roll it back. And these little start and stop transitions, once the pad whitens up, you won't see those guys. You won't see them at all. That pad will whiten up. Just, you will see the lines if they're not straight, but those little start and stops, as long as they're not really deep, you won't see them. Because the, the next day, this pad will be white. And you put your relief cuts and stuff in it, it all, it all blends in pretty nice. And that's it. We finished this pad, and believe it or not, the wind picked up and blew one of my knee boards, my styrofoam knee boards, blew it right onto the pad. And we had to reach out there and trowel it off and fix it. Right, Everything was done, it looked really good. And then just the wind just caught it and blew it right up on there and left a dent in the surface. So I had to get out there on the knee boards and fix the surface and then re-broom it. We, we didn't catch that on video, but looking back it's it's pretty funny now but if you ever do some brooming and you don't like it or something happens like that just get right out there on your on your boards and and trowel it off again mag it off and fix it all right guys we got her done hard to see in the sun but there's that we got a good pitch coming away we had to put a piece of cardboard there um there's a gutter right there and it's dripping I had a little sprinkle earlier, so we put a couple pieces of cardboard on it to stop it. No big deal. We got scared. It looked like rain for a while. Now the sun's out, so I'm in good shape. We'll come back tomorrow and cut it and strip the forms, put a little dirt around it. It's got a nice pitch. There was a huge hump right in the middle before. Now we did these two little pads out back, are done. Got this one here. New pad for his back door. And then we got a little air conditioning pad. It's got a nice pitch away from the house. That's it for today. See you next time. Okay guys, doing some cleanup over here. Got the pad all cut. We cut, we put quite a few relief cuts in it. I'm gonna wet it down here. Come out nice. We put some topsoil around it and stuff. A couple pads out back too. We, we backfilled them with some topsoil. Throw some seed down and we're out of here. Looks a lot better than it did before. And they're going to repave that driveway. See you on the next one, guys.